Rivian has made it no secret they're going hard after Tesla's FSD, and they might not be as far off as you think. For a long time, Tesla has been the name in vehicle autonomy. No other system has come close to the levels of autonomy that they've offered in their vehicles for any of their customers. However, Rivian is coming hard after them. RJ has made no secret of it. They're pouring more money into autonomy than any other sector of their business because he expects that within the next five to 10 years, that's going to become a major make or break buying decision for people buying vehicles. And honestly, I agree with him. So how far off are they? Now, before we get too deep into this topic, I don't expect that Rivian is going to bypass Tesla's FSD anytime soon. They have a huge head start. That said, Rivian is moving extremely quickly, and I think most people are underestimating how fast they're going. On December 11th, Rivian is going to have what they call an AI and autonomy day. This is where they're going to unveil a lot of the stuff that they've been working on, get us some demos of the technology, and talk about what the roadmap is for the future and when they plan to get there. It all sounds very promising, but if they really are moving that quickly, first of all, how have they moved that quickly, especially when Tesla has taken decades to get to this point? Or I guess a decade, a little bit more than a decade, I don't know, years. But also, how do we know that this isn't all just fluff? Well, we don't know for sure, but there are a few signs that look very promising, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But going back to the question of why they're able to move so quickly, well, I think there's a few factors here. The first one, and what I think is probably the biggest factor, is they're just a later mover. They're coming later on in the game than Tesla did. And as happens in the world of technology so often, you benefit from learning from other companies. And not to say that Tesla was the first to the self-driving game. They certainly were not. But they've been the first ones to do it at the scale they have. And the things that they have learned have rippled out into the industry, which just happens with the world of technology. And Rivian is able to stand on that innovation and learnings and progress from their own stance. Alongside that is hardware. Rivian has a lot of hardware at their disposal that Tesla simply didn't when they were starting 10 or 15 years ago, whenever it was. For example, NVIDIA Orin. That's what their autonomy system and at least R1 Gen 2 is built on and likely it's going to be an R2 as well. These are chips that are specifically made for AI workloads in a mobile environment like a car. A chip like that with that kind of horsepower just simply didn't exist when Tesla was starting out, so they had to develop their own. But that's not the only hardware that's helping Rivian move quickly. In addition to the processing hardware, they also have very high quality sensors on the camera. They have more megapixels of cameras than any other production vehicle in North America. Plus, they have extremely high quality radars, which Teslas don't have. This high quality data is extremely important for training an AI model. AI training takes a lot of very high quality information to get good results. Good in, good out. Trash in, trash out. So they wanna make sure they have really good data coming in. And the higher quality of the data, the faster they're able to accelerate that training. It takes a lot more time and effort to train on a set of cameras that are lower resolution and even more so the fact that they don't have other sensors to augment with it. And not to say that Tesla's approach is wrong, it's just adding more sensors, if done correctly, can make the training process move a lot more quickly. This is why oftentimes you'll see manufacturers driving around with these crazy rigs on their vehicles that kind of look like a Waymo, where it's got all these crazy LiDARs and radars mounted with a roof rack on the system. Tesla has been known to drive around with vehicles like this. Rivian has a fleet that they call Penguins. They're exactly what this is. It's a good, high-quality data-gathering system. But the real power comes when you have a whole fleet of customer-owned vehicles. Because while they have a few of those penguins that are collecting really high quality data in small quantities, it's dwarfed by the amount of miles that are being driven in customer vehicles and having the extra radars and megapixels just help train better. So sure, Rivian has the advantage of learning from those that came before <coughs> Tesla. They have high quality sensors that are helping them train quickly, but in the end, at this point, it's just talk. So how do we know that they're actually getting somewhere quickly? How do we know that this AI and autonomy day is actually going to show real results that are going to be in customers' vehicles soon? 
Again, as with anything in the world of technology, there are no guarantees. However, there are some signs that they are progressing quite quickly, and honestly, I feel like it looks pretty promising. One of the things that was most promising to me was watching Rivian turn on their own autonomy system for the first time to take complete control of the vehicle. I made a whole video about it here that you can watch. But in short, they had a mobile eye system or an off-the-shelf system that they were using for self-driving before that point. When they turned on their own autonomy system, it was a night and day difference. You could instantly tell it had a lot more situational awareness. That alone gave me a high degree of confidence that things are going well with Rivian's autonomy. Even though that changeover happened just a few months ago, in that short amount of time, the system has gotten significantly smarter and better. Every update has progressively improved things in very tangible ways. Along with these improvements, we're seeing small hints about features that are coming along, slowly building to the point where we can have a point-to-point self-driving system. For example, the system has started to hallucinate lines on roads with no lines at all. In the world of AI, a hallucination means that it sees or invents something that doesn't exist there. The interesting thing about these hallucinations or these lines that it's creating that don't exist is they're on the road where a line would be if it did exist. So what that's telling me is the system is looking for a viable path to drive down even though there's no clearly marked lanes on the road. This is extremely important for what they're going to call universal hands-free. The system being able to steer or drive itself on any road, not just geo to highways. Extremely important on the roadmap to point-to-point self-driving. Another very promising sign of what's to come is the way that highway assist behaves on densely packed highways. When you're changing lanes or traffic is speeding up and slowing down, it will highlight vehicles that it's paying attention to. And it's really interesting to watch the vehicles that highlights and how it reacts to them. It's able to read the body language of the driver, so to speak. Before they turn on their turn signal and start getting over, it's able to see that they're starting to inch over and kind of backs off. Likewise, if someone is coming up in your blind spot while you're trying to make a lane change, it can understand where they're headed and what their intentions are. Again, very important when you're going to have a full point-to-point -point self driving system. So while the current software certainly isn't there yet, and there's a very long way to go, you can see the roadmap of where they're going in the current software and how it's gaining abilities to perform new tasks. Slowly, these tasks will build upon each other and we'll get to the ultimate goal of getting a new car, putting it a destination and letting it drive the entire way. But now there's an elephant in the room that we have to talk about the cost. Up to this point, Rivian's self-driving system has been for free for all of its owners, but they've also been very clear from the time the Gen 2 went on sale, it is going to cost money. There will be a subscription associated with the Rivian autonomy platform. We don't really know details on the cost structure or when that's going to happen, but I'm fairly sure they're gonna say something about it on December 11th. Because the truth is Rivian has been pouring an immense amount of money. RJ has said a few times on a few different interviews that it is the single largest expenditure between anything else that Rivian does. So there's a lot of development that's going into it. Now, I'm not one that loves to pay monthly subscriptions. Honestly, I do what I can to avoid them a lot of the time. But I don't feel like this falls into the category of BMW trying to charge a fee for their heated seats that are already installed in the vehicle. This actually represents an ongoing cost to Rivian. This autonomy system is undergoing continuous development, and for the next decade, maybe two decades, it's going to be continuously evolving, growing, and getting better. There's continuous software development that goes into it. So you actually are paying an ongoing cost just like a phone plan or just like Connect Plus, for example. So I'm not really looking forward to paying for it, but I do understand why they're going to start charging. We'll see what the fee is, but you can bet they're probably gonna talk about it on December 11th. But there you have it. December 11th, I think is going to be a really exciting day. We don't know anything for sure. There are no guarantees, but I think things look promising and I think Rivian's gotten a lot farther than a lot of people realize. I guess we'll find out for sure. If you're interested in buying a Rivian and you found this information helpful, I'm gonna have my referral code linked down below. You'll get a little kickback when you buy your vehicle. These are chips that are specific. These are chips. 
specific technology. Rivian has a fleet today that's augmented by a different kind of sensor, radar. Sensor? Did I just say sensor? 